In this video, I'm going to show how to perform a synced relative compression test using the Handtech. So you're going to need your Handtech 1008 oscilloscope and the USB cable, the CC650 current clamp by Handtech, an appropriate voltage probe, this is a 1x 10x probe, some type of back probe adapter, in this case a T-pin, and a clamp large enough to clamp the battery terminals and some jumper cables. So we're going to open the Handtech 1008 software. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, re we're going to perform a calibration. At this point on your voltage probe, you should have the positive and the negative shorted together. So I'm going to press calibration, hit OK. It only takes a couple of seconds. Both your voltage probe and your current clamp should be connected to channel 1 and channel 2 respectively. So once the calibration is done, I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to turn off the channels that we're not going to use. In this case, channels 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So here we are turning off channel 8. Next, we're going to adjust the zero levels of the channels. Channel 2 will be set to the lowest part possible so we can see as much of the waveform as possible. And channel 1 will be placed there so it'll be out of the way. We're going to adjust the time to 200 milliseconds per division so the entire screen will be one second wide. And we're going to adjust channel 1 to 10x because this is a 10x probe in the 10x setting to 1 volt per division so we'll see the clear spikes of the ignition coil firing. For channel 2, we're going to use the CC650 and 650 amp mode. And we're going to adjust it to 50 amps per division. This way we'll be able to see the waveform quite clearly. The trigger is going to be off channel 2. Uh, we're going to be doing a single screen and with the positive trigger slope. And we want the trigger to be roughly 150 amps. This way we'll be sure that the starter is causing the trigger and we're moving the trigger all the way to the left so we can see all of the waveform at once. So right now it's stopped and we're going to press play to begin capturing the waveform. Now we're going to set up our probes and current clamps for the reading. So here is the connector to the number one ignition coil. We'll be using a T-pin to back probe the control wire for the ignition coil. If you're unsure which one is the control wire you can just test them all and see which one sends the square wave that corresponds to the firing of the ignition coil. So once the T-pin is in, you can use your voltage probe to connect to it. So here I'm using this 10X probe and it has a nice little hook with a spring. Now we're going to connect our ground wire. Here I'm using just a red wire that I had uh, for my ground and I just connect it to the alligator clip there. On the other side of that red wire, I'm hooking up the large battery clamp and it just connects right in. Next, I'm going to use the CC650 clamp. We're going to turn it on to the 1 millivolt slash 1 amp mode. We're going to hit the button to calibrate it. We can't use the positive terminal of the battery because it's not accessible. So we're going to be using the negative. We're not going to use the wire on the left because that's not going to the chassis. We're using the one on the right because that one is going to the chassis. And since the ground for the starter motor is connected to the engine motor and thus the chassis, that's where we're going to get the best signal. So let's listen in for the compression test. So here's the screen that we got from these, this relative compression test. The blue trace is the current going through the starter motor, whereas the yellow trace is the signal for the number one ignition coil. In this particular case, the car only fires the ignition coil once, once in clear flood mode. So that's why you only see one spike, but it's useful for indicating which bump on the blue trace is the number one cylinder. We're going to switch to uh, 20 amps per division. So let's see what that looks like. So here you can see that the blue trace is a lot clearer. You can see the individual bumps that represent the starter motor attempting to compress the gases in the cylinder. And you can see one of the spikes, it corresponds to the number one cylinder. 
So since we know the firing order of this vehicle, one, three, four, two, we can assign a cylinder to each one of those bumps. If there was a space where there was no bump, we can we will be able to see that that particular cylinder lacks compression. So we're going to go to another example, one that I took many years ago. This is a Toyota Tacoma with a four cylinder engine. This waveform shows a relative compression test on a vehicle that had uneven compression. As you can see, the spikes are, are quite pronounced in their difference in height. And I labeled the measured pressure after the fact and the cylinder number corresponding to each spike. As you can see that there's a 40 PSI difference between cylinders four and two, and that corresponds to a 20 amp difference. So in this particular vehicle, even though the pressure differences weren't great, it is still pretty clear that there is uneven pressure. And if you follow that dotted line between the spike of cylinder two and then the next turn over on cylinder two, they are roughly the same height. So even without the annotation that I put there, you may be able to figure out how many cylinders this vehicle is and which cylinder corresponds to which bump. This particular example shows the usefulness of the relative compression test since I did not have to take apart any items to perform this test. I just hooked up the current clamp, cranked the motor over a few times, and out came this waveform, giving me a lot of valuable information. Now, you do not just get information about the compression of the cylinders, but you can also get information about the starter motor itself. Since you are doing a current test of the starter motor, as you can see in this next example on an F-150 motor, there are huge spikes downwards. In this case, I'm sorry about that, but the yellow trace is now the current. And we can see that the current goes to almost zero for an amount of time. In this particular case, this was a car that had an intermittent start that sometimes it would start and sometimes it wouldn't. And the problem was the starter motor. And here it's very clear that the brushes on the starter motor are losing contact on the commutator, which translates into zero current for a brief moment in time. If the starter motor happened to land on a position where the brushes contacted the commutator well, the vehicle would start. But sometimes the brushes would not contact the commutator well and the vehicle wouldn't start. And sometimes a little bit of rocking, sometimes just by dumb luck or dumb chance, the brushes would contact correctly and it would turn over, but it would intermittently cause a bad start. So when the vehicle came in, it always started. So I decided to do a relative compression test, so to speak, and found this. And, and by this, I was sure that the starter was the culprit in this situation. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope uh, you learned something about relative compression tests and their usefulness. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them below. I love reading the comments to my videos and I love talking to my viewers. Thank you so much for watching this and until next time.